Ever since the very beginnings of Donald Trump's candidacy, a lot of people have wondered if Trump is involved in any secret orders or esoteric groups or the Illuminati. And during his campaign, Newt Gingrich said on Fox News that the elite do not want Donald Trump because he's not part of the club and has not gone through the initiation rites. He doesn't belong to the secret society. Newt Gingrich said that on Fox News, but does that make it true? Gingrich is a 33-degree Mason, and Freemasons are encouraged to lie when it comes to their rhetoric. And Albert Pike, the cleric of Freemasonry, admitted this in his book, Morals and Dogma. Masonry, like all religions, all the mysteries, hermeticism, and alchemy, conceals its secrets from all except the adepts and sages, or the elect, and uses false explanations and misinterpretations of its symbols to mislead those who deserve only to be misled, to conceal the truth, which it calls light from them, and to draw them away from it. Truth is not for those who are unworthy or unable to receive it or would pervert it. And he said that in his book, Morals and Dogma. So by his own words, Freemasons purposely hide, they purposely deceive, they purposely lie, they purposely misdirect because they believe that those who are not their members deserve to be misled. So if Newt Gingrich said that Donald Trump's not a member and Newt Gingrich is a 33 degree Mason, is it true what he said? This is what we have to look at. And if we are in the end times right now, we can expect that there's going to be deception because the Bible tells us the great delusion would come. So while this great delusion is pounding the shores of the land, that would mean that in order to survive as a follower of Jesus, it's going to take discernment and examining the facts. And in this video, I'm going to present three exhibits that will show evidence that Donald J. Trump is a member of the Freemasons or a dark society. So now let's look at Exhibit A. Donald Trump has an odd way of posing and sitting. He seems to favor putting his thumb and fingertips together and pointing his hand downward. And as we look at the hand gesture, it appears to be making an inverted pyramid. He's always doing this. So the question is why? And of course, to show intellectual honesty, we must also include that maybe it's just a habit. Perhaps his fingertips are normally attracted to each other. And he can't help it. If that's the case, it's a subconscious thing, maybe. Or is it deliberate? It is one of the Freemasonry signs. And as we look at the images, they look deliberate. I wondered if he's commanded to do it like if he stops will someone be unhappy or what if he's doing it to earn something now we're going to talk about that in a moment but these gestures appear to be making the inverted pyramid but what does that mean what is the inverted pyramid well to explain it we're going to look at a quick background of the Freemasonry symbol the inverted pyramid Try to get a hold of what I'm about to share in the following primer because it's going to help explain where I am going with this. And also, if you may be a born-again Christian and you love Jesus, I want you to know that these symbols that I'm going to show you can do you no harm. Now, the inverted pyramid is a symbol that's used by Freemasons, members of the occult, Satanists, New Agers, pagans, and many others who practice the esoteric mysticism and dark arts. Its origin is found in the ancient fertility cult of Babylon. It goes all the way back to the beginning of time when Satan was deceiving the earth at the very beginning. He wanted to come up with a counterfeit to draw people away from the truth of Elohim, of Yahweh. So he came up with his counterfeits to try to replace. And then he also included with the counterfeits the doctrine 
of his false religion, and he purposely appealed to the carnality of man. His original false counterfeit religion included lust and carnality and promiscuity and adultery and fornication. When the children of Israel migrated into the promised land, they were exposed to the fertility cult in the land of Canaan where Baal and Asherah were worshipped. A lot of Christians don't know this, but Baal worship is a sexual religion at its core. Many modern Christians erroneously think that the main attraction of Baal worship was bowing down to idols and statues, but the real attraction was the sexual activity that went along with Baal worship. Because during their rituals, it was common for orgies to break out to please their fertility god. And through the centuries, mankind has never changed. Today, the residents of earth also take part in ritualistic fornication under the guise of pagan fertility rituals, especially in America. Can America be great if these things are taking place on our shores? If Burning Man is taking place on our shores, can America be great? A burning Man is not just a small gathering of a few earth worshipers. It's an annual event where tens of thousands of people meet in the desert to have an orgy. Baal worship is everywhere. And let us not forget spring break has become one of the cultural staples of America's young people as they make their passage into adulthood. This occurs every year by the millions. What does this have to do with the Upside Down Pyramid? What I'm establishing is that the Upside Down Pyramid, the Inverted Pyramid, is sexual. And in this world that denies God, the main attraction of being a human is sexual deviancy and carnality. It's always been about the sexual temptations of man. And as I just mentioned, the children of Israel were confronted with the temptation of fertility worship when they entered the promised land and were introduced to Baal and Asherah. Now God told them to tear down the altars, but unfortunately they did not and the corruption spread into their camp. And Baal was made the male deity of the cult, and Asherah was the female. And over time, Satan spread the fertility cult throughout the world. And the original names of the deities evolved into other names as they polluted planet Earth. Asherah goes by several names, including the geographical region where she is worshipped. But Asherah goes by Astarte, Astareth, Astargadis, Athirat, Venus, Isis, Juno, Ishtar, the Queen of Heaven, Aphrodite, Hadad, and many other names. Right here we see an idol of Asherah from an antiquities dig. We see horns on top of her head. Those horns were symbolic of mountain peaks. As archaeologists have made discoveries, they have found stone carvings of the goddess Asherah. We can see right here the inverted triangle of Asherah represents the female anatomy. And as you can see, the inverted triangle was part of Asherah's renderings and represented the female portion of human anatomy, while Baal represented the male anatomy with the use of pillars and poles. And over time, Baal's name morphed into other names, but the basics remained the same. Fertility worship took place in temples utilizing phallic symbols, obelisks, maypoles, and pillars. And today, these practices continue in pagan religions, cults, New Age ceremonies, and secret orders throughout the world. Now, how important is the inverted triangle to the occult? Well, let's take a look at this. The symbol is extolled by Satanists. This is Lucifer's symbol. The upside-down triangle is revered and used in many occult rituals. Right here is uh, an image taken from an early 1900s book of their practice. Now in this one, you can see that this ritualistic talisman utilizes both the upright and the inverted triangle. And then we have another one here. So as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, the inverted triangle has special meaning to those who are allied with the underworld. Now, if you're wondering, what does this have to do with Freemasonry? The answer is dualism. Dualism is the belief that opposites in the universe work together for balance and compatibility. It's a belief that the forces of good and evil need each other, which to them minimizes God and elevates Satan as being equals, because they believe that God and Satan are equals who depend on each other for the universe to function. And as a result, there's no such thing as right and wrong. It's only balance. 
Now, Freemasons believe that when an initiate of their craft gains a full understanding of dualism, then they will reach illumination. And they have many symbols for dualism, including the tiled floor in many of their lodges. And this is to show the opposites that together work for balance. And dualism is also represented in the very popular Freemasonry symbol of the square and the compass. A lot of regular folks don't know what this means. In fact, a lot of them are told it represents God, the great architect, because a G is inside of a compass and a square. And as you can see, looking at this image, the compass is pointing up for the upright pyramid, and that represents the male. And then you have the square below it. It represents the inverted triangle. The novice initiate of Freemasonry is taught that this symbol represents God, the great architect. But as we read earlier, Freemasonry purposely deceives those who do not understand. And in reality, the meaning of the square and the compass is sexual. The following excerpt explains it. And this was admitted by former 33 degree Mason James D. Shaw, who gave an explanation as it is known to Royal Arch Initiates. This is what he said about the square and the compass. The real meaning of these great lights is sexual. The square represents the female generative principle, which includes the earth and the base thing, sensual nature, while the compass represents the male, the active generative principle, the things above, the sun, the heavens, and the higher spiritual nature. And when the compass is arranged above the square, it symbolizes that the male sun is impregnating the earth with life-producing rays. And he went on to say the true meaning of the square and the compass are twofold. The earthly human representations are of the man and his phallus, and also the woman with her female reproductive organs. And the cosmic meaning is that of the active sun, which is in truth a deity, the sun god, from above, imparting life into the passive earth, the earth fertility goddess who is below and producing new life. Now folks, try to get a hold of this because this principle is utilized by all of those who worship their false gods. It includes the New Age. It includes Indian Hinduism. It includes the religion of the pagans and the Druids, the Luciferians, the Illuminati. So dualism to them means God and Satan are equals or right and wrong are the same. And as a result, there is no such thing as sin. There is no such thing as breaking God's commandments because there are no commandments. Doing what the human soul wills to do is the sum of their law. The dark practice of Satanism also relies on dualism. And one of the models of their renowned goat statue, the Bathomet, reveals it because it points up and down. And that's the motto of the Bathomet as above, so below. The Bathomet is also a transgender. It's neither male nor female. And the symbol of the Bathomet features the sun above and the dark moon below, black and white. So Satanism also depends on contrast. I mentioned all of that, ladies and gentlemen, so that we can move forward to now look at the evidence. When members of the occult practice their rituals, their motive is to gain and receive strength and riches and prosperity from their deity. They do it in exchange for temporary fame and riches and achievement. Many entertainers have done this. Politicians have done this. This is what Bohemian Grove is all about. They do this for power. In order to gain their power, they have to submit their loyalty to their deities. They do this through secret rituals and also by showing loyalty in plain sight in front of everybody. Now, make note of this, ladies and gentlemen. If they regularly show the symbolic gestures openly and in plain sight, then they are also practicing an invocation to the deity in plain sight. You see, just making the symbol with their hands is not an empty gesture. It's actually an invocation to their gods. And Donald Trump often postures himself with the inverted pyramid gesture. So we have to ask, if he is an active participant of the craft, 
He's doing it in plain sight. But is that all there is? No. Donald Trump has exhibited and promoted the inverted pyramid in other areas of his life. So now let's look at Exhibit B, the odd campaign button. When he was campaigning, some of his staff members wore a lapel pin that was very strange looking because it was an inverted pyramid with the colors purple and gold. At the time, members of the press wondered about it, but they didn't really pursue it. And as a result, the story didn't really get that much traction. But the question needs to be asked, why? Why did their staff members wear such an odd-looking campaign button? And what did it mean? Right here we see President Communications Director, Press Secretary, Sean Spicer also wore it. And then we also see Mr. Corey right here who wore it. He was Trump's campaign manager. Well, that was until he got fired. But he also wore it. So as the press was wondering about it, eventually the Trump team came up with a story. And the Secret Service provided that story, or at least they were the excuse. What they said was these pins were just to help them identify the members of the Trump team so that they could know them from the crowd. Now that may sound good, but it doesn't really explain why they continued to wear the pins when they were by themselves. Here we see a picture of Corey Lewandowski visiting a TV station doing an interview, and he's wearing the pin. Did that help the Secret Service to know that he was still a good guy? This does not make sense. Here's another image of him doing an interview, wearing the pin, but they're not in the crowd now. That explanation doesn't really make sense, and what it appears to be is that they're wearing the pin to send a message to those who are watching them. Freemasons and secret orders love to hide things in plain sight. So if this was a symbolic in-your-face effort to display their symbol, what does it mean? The pen appears to resemble the colors of a Grand Master Freemason, which is an office that presides over a Masonic jurisdiction. And the person holding the title is also referred to Most Worshipful Grand Master. Now, there are two ways to obtain this position. The first one is through loyal effort by working their way up. But the second method is to become a Grand Master by honorary placement. And there's been several presidents in the past who have received the honorary placement of Grand Master, including Franklin D. Roosevelt, Harry S. Truman, and Gerald Ford. And in this image right here, we can see President Truman in his Grand Master apron he was awarded the honorary office, and he accepted it. We can see that the colors are gold and purple, which coincide with the office. Now, Freemasonry aprons come in a variety of colors, depending on the office. As you can see right here, the purple and the gold does resemble the pen. Here they are next to each other. So, what we have so far is circumstantial evidence, but we're building a case. So where are we? We've talked about the inverted pyramid. We've talked about the origins of the inverted triangle and the upright triangle and what they mean. They are sourced from the fertility cult going all the way back to the kingdom of Babylon where Satan invented his religions to counterfeit the true religion to Yahweh, Elohim, God our Father. And the symbols that Satan came up with originate in the anatomy of both the male and female gender. You have the pillars of Baal that represent the male, and then you have the Asherah, the inverted triangles, to represent the female's genital region. Now, we are going to look at the final evidence. And ladies and gentlemen, please continue to finish this video because it's going to come together as an explosion of reality and truth. Now, let's look at Trump Tower. By now, most of the Western world is familiar with it, it was completed in 1983, and it is 664 feet high. That's the official reported height of Trump Tower. And before I move on, I want to emphasize the present age of that tower because it's very interesting. In this narrative that we're looking at, and then when we add Donald Trump, who is now the President of the United States, Trump Tower was built in 1983. It's 33 years old. It was completed on November 
the 30th, 1983, and then it became the home of Donald Trump. Now, if we do the math, it was completed November 30th, 83. Trump was elected president on November the 8th, 2016. And then the Electoral College cast their votes for him on December 19th, 2016. So when the electoral votes were cast for Donald Trump on December 19th, Trump Tower had just had its 33rd birthday. This means the tower was 33 years old when Trump officially became the President of the United States. Now, does this have significance? Is it a coincidence? Well, let's continue and let's find out. Now, officially, Trump Tower has 58 floors, but Donald Trump added an extra 10 floors to the elevator numbers and claims that it has 68 floors. He lives in the top three floors in his penthouse, so in the mind of Trump, his penthouse begins on 466, which is an interesting number. Now, the purpose of this disclosure is to determine if Donald J. Trump is involved in Freemasonry or some other esoteric dark art or mystical belief. And folks, based on what I'm about to show you, I believe that Trump Tower offers the best evidence. And I'm about to show you why. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the members of their veiled craft will often conceal information in plain sight. And they will use symbols to represent their beliefs. And also, many religions of the occult and paganism will borrow from one another with similar doctrines. And the reason for this is because they all have the same author, also known as Satan the Deceiver. Now, watch this, folks. The Satanic Church's belief of dualism is represented by the transgender Baphomet, which possesses both male and female anatomy. The Freemasons do the same thing with their square and compass, which represents both male and female anatomy. And when we look at the ancient fertility cults of Baal worship, both the male and female anatomy were represented in the pillars, the Asherah and the Grove of Trees. Now let's look at Trump Tower. From the ground level, most people have not noticed that the tower's anatomy tells a concealed story because the attention is always at the front gate of Trump Tower, the main entrance at street level. And when Trump was elected president, a lot of people gathered and took pictures. They wanted to see the famous tower and the New York Police Department had to set up a perimeter to block bystanders from getting too close because it had to be declared a security site and turned into a fortress because America's new president lived there. So a lot of people focused on the front door. But they didn't really look up. Most people didn't study what was above them. When the TV cameras were there and the media was there, they didn't really talk about the outside of the building. And that's because from ground level, it's kind of hard to see what's going on above them. Now folks, watch this. Based on what I'm about to show you, I'll say it right now. Trump Tower represents the dualism of Baal's pillars. It represents the male portion of the anatomy and the inverted triangle of Asherah and the mystical grove of trees. So now, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Exhibit C. This is what the evidence has brought me to conclude. It appears that Trump Tower was built to be a temple, number one, and number two, it was built to be a continual invocation to the spirit world. Let me say that again, folks. Trump Tower was built to be in a constant state of spiritual invocation. And I know that sounds crazy. I know it does. But over the past few years, we've witnessed pagan rituals that celebrated the underworld. We have seen it in previous Olympic ceremonies where they did rituals. We've seen it in Super Bowl halftime shows. We've seen it during the Grammys. We saw it when the shamans opened the portals and when Anubis was paraded across the country. The jackaled god that presides over the city of death. And now we have a president who is a very unique individual. He's very wealthy, and he lets everybody know that. He loves to parade his wealth in shiny things. He loves to show the display of gold and silver and precious stones. And now he's the most powerful man in the world. Now, folks, he did not get there by accident. And I also do not believe that he got there based on a prophecy by a retired fireman. 
I believe the fireman prophecy is false, and I've talked about that on other programs. And I believe that I have provided evidence to prove that fireman prophecy is not true. If you want to read more about it, you can go to my website, watchmanscry.com, and you'll be able to find it in there. But Donald Trump is the most powerful man in the world, and he didn't get there by accident. I'm not saying it based on just my opinion. I'm basing it on the evidence of Donald Trump that he has revealed himself. Now, when we look at his penthouse, right here we have pictures of his penthouse. His penthouse is decorated with paintings and artwork that pays homage to the deities of ancient mythology. On his ceiling, he has a painting of Apollo on a chariot being led into the sky by Aurora. He also has Apollo on his mantle. Additionally, we can find other carved images in his penthouse. Here's one of the mythological deities, Eros and Psyche. Why does Trump have this? Well, some could say it's just decoration. He's into mythology. He likes the storyline of Apollo and finds it neat. We could say that. Now, before anyone says it's no big deal, I want to remind everyone watching this of the prophecy in the book of Revelation. It's found in chapter 9, and it says, And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. This is a, a prophecy of what's going to happen during the tribulation period. At some point in the future, God is going to allow the bottomless pit to be opened. He's going to allow that hatch to be opened so that demon creatures will come to the surface of the earth to lay waste to those under judgment, to those who have rejected God. And then it goes on to say that these demonic creatures have a king over them. Verse 11, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue his name is Apollyon, which is another rendition of Apollo. In ancient Greece, Apollo was known as the God King and the Destroyer. Plato wrote in Cratylus that Apollo should be feared and could only be appeased through sacrifices. In Homer's Iliad, Apollo sends death, destruction, and pestilence to a city for nine days. Apollo came down furious from the summits of Olympus with his bow and his quiver upon his shoulder, and the arrows rattled on his back with the rage that trembled within him. He sat himself down, away from the ships, with a face as dark as night, and his silver bow rang death as he shot his arrow in the midst of them. But presently, he aimed his shafts at the people themselves, and all day long, the pyres of the dead were burning. Ladies and gentlemen, Abaddon the Destroyer is Apollo the Destroyer. This creature's not human, folks. The Principality Apollyon has several renditions, including Apollo. He is the destroyer, and his real name is Satan. Most mythology that has evolved over time is based on the spiritual battle of God versus Satan, or the fall of Satan. And the Hellenistic character of Apollo is one of those. And Donald Trump has him painted on his ceiling. When we look at the end time prophecy of the villain of the tribulation period, the coming little horn, also known as the Antichrist. We can read in Daniel 11:37. it says, Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers. Donald Trump's father is Presbyterian. But if Donald Trump does practice the dark esoteric arts, which acknowledge underworld entities like Apollo, then this would qualify to fulfilling the verse that we find in Daniel 11:37. Because if Trump's dad was a Presbyterian, but Donald Trump himself worships underworld creatures, then neither shall he regard the God of his fathers would be fulfilled in Donald Trump. And if you're wondering, am I proposing that Donald Trump is the Antichrist? Am I saying that right now? I am not saying he is. I am saying that we need to keep him on the table as one of the candidates. Because what if he is? What if he is, ladies and gentlemen? This topic is about Trump Tower. As I stated earlier, most people at the street level 
only see what's going on at the street level, but they don't see what's going on above them. So now let's look from an aerial view. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Here is the picture. This is Trump Tower before your eyes. The inverted pyramid that represents the female, Asherah, is built into his building. It's right there. And we also see above the inverted triangle, seven pillars rising, which represents Baal. So we have the female and the male in Trump Tower. There's another image of it. Count the points at the top of the building. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven points. And now for the grand finale. Let's zoom in on the inverted pyramid. If you're looking at this image, let's count the trees going across. One, starting from the left, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Do you see it? Six on the top. And then when we count down the right side, one, two, three, four, five, six, and the same thing on the left. One, two, three, four, five, six. What does this mean? It means that Trump's inverted triangle of Asherah that's on his building in the exterior of his home for the last 33 years represents 666. And it doesn't stop there, folks. Look at this. The fertility cult always places a grove of trees. Trees represent the feminine. And how interesting is it that Trump's inverted pyramid is made up with a grove of trees? And also, when you're looking from afar, the trees appear to look like the private area of a woman's anatomy. It's right there, folks. Some of you are thinking I'm being crude. We're all adults. It is right there. This cannot be denied. Now, is this a coincidence? Did Trump not know what his tower looked like? Of course he did. He designed it. Here's an image of the young Trump standing over his temple. He could put his finger on the triangle and count the steps. He was proud of it. He had to know about the inverted 666 triangle. It was his design. And also when we look at the upper portion, we can see that the upper portion of the building simulates the rising pillars of Baal. And right here, it's plain to see. You can count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now what does this mean? The pillars of Baal rise up and the inverted pyramid transcends down into the earth. Now right here is a 3D image of the tower to make it a little bit easier to see. And here's another view from the top of the tower, from the roof, looking down. And as you can see, we have the seven points below and then the pyramid toward the end. This is looking down. So we have the 666 pyramid sitting on seven mountains. Here's a close-up of the 666 inverted triangle. Now, folks, here it is before our eyes. It's right here. And Donald Trump was either deliberate with the tower's design or it was an accident. But do you think it was? When we take all of the things we've looked at, I believe that Donald Trump was deliberate with the design of the tower, which completely tells the story of Baal's pillars and Asherah's fertility. And I also submit this. Because of this design, the tower has served as an ongoing invocation to the spirit world on Donald Trump's behalf. He did this so that he would be rewarded with earthly riches and power. Now let me take it even further. Trump Tower is a temple to the deities of the underworld, and his penthouse is a temple to Freemasonry. Now let's look at the interior of Manhattan's Freemasonic Lodge. This is from Manhattan's Lodge in his same town. Now look at the chandelier on the ceiling. It's round and there's two of them. There's a pair of them, and toward the bottom of the chandelier is a little bulb that extrudes. Now let's look inside of Trump's penthouse. Look at his chandelier. They are similar. Is that all there is? No. Freemasonic lodges will often feature the twin pillars of Jacob and Boaz. That's the name that God gave to Solomon when he built the temple for Israel that was dedicated to him. God told him to place two pillars on the outside and name them Jacob and Boaz. And Jacob means he will establish it and Boaz means by his strength. So together it means by his strength God will establish it. And often in their Freemasonic lodges, they will place imitations of Jacob and Boaz, the pair, the two pillars. Here we see a, another Freemasonic lodge, and we can see that they have the pillars in pairs. There's several images right here. Now, let's look at Donald Trump's penthouse. The pillars are installed 
also in pairs. So there you go, folks. The evidence is before you. And I conclude, and I am of the opinion that based on what we have seen, Donald Trump is a cloaked member of Freemasonry. And he did not become the president by accident. Now, a moment ago I mentioned that three presidents were given the office of an honorary Grand Master. I am also proposing this. Based on what we have seen, I am led to believe, in my opinion, that Donald Trump was given an honorary placement in the Freemasons. If he is not a, an active member, he was at minimum given an honorary title. And that is why the pins were placed on his staff. It was to communicate that he was acknowledging it and he was thankful for it. Based on what we have seen right here, it is my opinion that Donald Trump made deals with the elite and with invocations to the dark arts in order to become the president. Now, granted, I could be wrong. I understand that. I could be. And if it's proven that I'm wrong, I'll recant what I'm saying right here. I will repent to what I'm saying right here. But the evidence tells quite a different story. So in conclusion, here's what we have. Trump Tower features the number 666 on an inverted pyramid that is built into his building. We also have that the edifice of Trump Tower exhibits seven sections that rise like seven pillars of Baal. We also have that Trump's penthouse is on the 66th floor. We also have that his penthouse has mythological deities on his ceiling. He also has paintings and artwork of the deities. He possesses mythological deities in the form of statues. And his interior replicates the inside of a Grand Lodge. The chandelier resembles what we find in the Grand Lodge, and the pillars inside his penthouse are also in pairs. Now, I could go on and on, but this video is already long enough. I'm going to be continuing this research. You can go to my website at watchmanscry.com. I have an ongoing series called The Trump Chronicles, and you can see the hard copy of this video at my website. In an upcoming installment, we're going to be looking at Donald Trump's coat of arms. I'm going to break it down, and I'm going to show that aside from the Order Out of Chaos eagle that's on one of his coat of arms, there's also other symbolic images that pay homage to deities of mythology and the underworld. So, thank you for watching. Subscribe to this channel. If you appreciate what we're doing, go to my website and send an email and let us know what you think. And with that, take care, folks. Thanks for watching.